Welcome to Lesson 12 Sabbath School Summary. We will be looking at the title, Rewards of Faithfulness. May the Lord bless us as we look at this second last lesson of the quarter. Sabbath afternoon. The memory text is from Matthew chapter 25 verse 21. It says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. On Sabbath afternoon, the lesson discusses how rewards can serve as a motivation for faithful living, even though salvation cannot be earned. The lesson emphasizes that the Bible uses the promise of reward to encourage believers to use their resources for God's kingdom, while having an eternal perspective in managing them. The lesson explores different promises of reward in the Bible, such as eternal life, a crown of righteousness, a heavenly inheritance, and a place in God's kingdom, which are given to believers through Christ after his second coming. The lesson reminds believers that these rewards are not based on their own merit but on God's grace and faithfulness. Ultimately, the lesson encourages believers to have faith in God's promises and to live with the assurance of receiving them through Christ. Sunday, Reward for Faithfulness. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. To see what this verse means to us. How should we respond to what it says? See also Revelations 22:12, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10, and Isaiah chapter 62 verse 11. What do all these texts teach us? The rewards that God gives to his faithful children are unique and beyond our finite understanding. The Bible tells us that great is our reward in heaven, but our human language is inadequate to describe it. The reward for faithfulness is not the same as salvation by works, as no one has works good enough to merit salvation before God. The point of the cross is that we are saved by grace, not by our own works. Rewards are the outworking of what God has done for us and in us. As believers, we are called to lay aside every weight and sin and run the race of faith with endurance, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Monday lesson discusses the topic, Everlasting Life. This title is driven from Romans chapter 6 verse 23 and John chapter 3 verse 16. May we read them so that we see, what options are presented to us. On Monday, the lesson emphasizes that as human beings, we are destined for eternity, either eternal life or eternal death. The lesson highlights the importance of choosing eternal life and trusting in God's promises, which he has the unique ability to fulfill. The lesson directs readers to John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3, where Jesus promises to come again and receive us unto himself so that we can be with him in heaven. The lesson emphasizes that Christ's death on the cross at his first coming is our greatest assurance of his second coming, which is promised in scripture. The lesson encourages believers to have faith in God's promises and to look forward to the fulfillment of these promises in eternity. Tuesday talking about the, the new Jerusalem, read Revelation chapter 21 and see, what are some of the things that we are promised. Tuesday's lesson discusses the biblical description of the new Jerusalem, which is the home of God's faithful children in heaven during the millennium and on the new earth for eternity. The lesson emphasizes that the new Jerusalem is God's masterpiece and that it is built for those who love him and keep his commandments. The lesson also highlights the hope that is found in the promise of living in the New Jerusalem, including the privilege of dwelling with Jesus without the veil of sin distorting what we see. Additionally, the lesson mentions the promise that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain, for the former things will have passed away. The lesson concludes by emphasizing the closeness that the redeemed will have with God in the New Jerusalem, which is not experienced fully in this fallen world. Wednesday, discusses, the settling of accounts. Reading Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 19 and Matthew chapter 25 verses 20 to 23, we will find, who is the one traveling into a far country? To whom does he entrust his goods? On Wednesday, the lesson discusses the disciples' questions about the signs of Jesus' second coming and the end of the world in Matthew chapter 24 and 25. The focus is on the parable of the talents and its deeper meaning. 
The lesson emphasizes that the talents in the parable represent not only spiritual gifts but also the temporal means that God has entrusted to his people. The faithful use of these resources for his cause is crucial in preparing for Christ's return. The lesson also highlights that it is essential to focus on what God has entrusted to us rather than comparing our responsibilities with others. The faithful money managers in the parable are commended and promised to enter into the joy of their Lord, which refers to the eternal reward and joy in heaven. Thursday discussion says, Eyes on the prize. The Bible in Romans chapter 8 verses 16 to 18 provides an interesting answer to the question, how was the knowledge that he was a child of God a factor in his faithfulness? Thursday's lesson focuses on the life of Paul, his willingness to suffer for the sake of Christ, and his strong belief in the reward of the faithful. The lesson emphasizes that true prosperity is not the accumulation of possessions, but having what one needs when they need it. God promises to supply the needs of his children and offers something far greater than worldly wealth, eternal life and true wealth and responsibility in his kingdom. The lesson encourages believers to strive for the same assurance that Paul had through God's grace, and to be ready to endure hardships and suffer for the sake of Christ. Friday gives the further thought that considers that, the stewardship vision for Seventh-day Adventist churches around the world. People have embraced biblical principles of financial management, leading to a lifestyle marked by moderation, discipline, and contentment. As a result, they experience peace, lack of anxiety over financial matters, and gratefulness. Marital conflict over money is largely eliminated, and people come to worship with a sense of anticipation and expectation of God's presence. The church's ministries are fully funded, and it has a strong outreach, extending the love of Christ in tangible ways to those in need. Finally, the thought poses the question of what God is calling us to do with the resources he has entrusted to us. Thank you for studying this study, and let us pray God uses it to prepare us for a future with no stress and problems to worry about money and other material resources, but put God first as he will give us all the other secondary things we need in our lives.